Hey everyone and welcome to another episode about the LEGO Train 2022 layout that I'm working on. In the previous episode I have installed lighting onto this train. This is uh, one half, there's also a second half. Now the whole thing is that I'm using this 9 volt system. The power is picked up by the, uh, by, uh, the wheels of the motor from the track. Uh, which means that uh, also the power for the lighting inside the train is coming from the track. So when the train stops at the station for example, the track is powered down and also the lighting is powered down. Now I didn't want that to happen, so I came up with a solution to install a battery. <coughs> now, uh, if you want to know more about that, please check out the uh, previous episode. Um, let's open up first. There's one little thing I need to mention, and that's about this power boost board that you see here, which controls the uh, the, the lighting and the um, charging of the LiPo battery. It turned out there are two versions. Um, this is the Power Boost 1000C, and previous I had the Power Boost 1000 without the C. Turns out that the C has the charging circuit and the and the power boost without the C doesn't have a charging circuit. I didn't know that. I had the power boost basic, which didn't have the circuit. So I was like, why isn't it charging well? <laughs> because it was lacking a charging circuit. So um, I needed to buy another board. Uh, there's only one available so uh, for right now. So that's this one that is in here. Um, and we're going to test it right now. So what it basically going to do is I have made a little uh, external circuitry here that you see with a voltmeter on top and that voltmeter will indicate the power that is coming from the uh, battery. Now this is of course again Chinese crap so the voltmeter is uh, indicating half a volt less than the voltage actually is. Why it does that I don't know. I don't care really, um, it's just something that I keep in mind. So why did I place a voltmeter on top of the train? Well, that way we're going to measure the, uh, the voltage on the battery. So um, we're going to run the train and um, we're going to see if the whole thing charges the battery or not. And you know that it's charging because you see the voltage of the battery remaining in a, a certain place or maybe go down just a little bit, maybe go up a little bit, I don't know what actually happens. I haven't tested it yet. So, but before we're getting into that, I want to show you another thing. Uh, so this is the, the little test loop that I built that we're gonna use for this uh, thing. It is controlled by a Arduino, an Arduino, uh, a mega, a bit of overkill, but uh, <laughs> it was the one that I could find. And uh, a little driver board. So what this actually does, it it powers up the track for uh, 20 seconds, then it stops for 10 seconds, and then it's powering up for 20 seconds again. So there's going to be alternating mode in which the train will ride and will stop, will ride and stop. So we're going to test it, we're going to run it for a few hours, and then we're going to see what happens to the uh, voltage of the battery. So I hooked the whole thing uh, up, and as you can see the lighting is now enabled in the train. I got 3.5 volts coming out of the battery is a bit more now it's uh, because uh, the, the offset and um, the first thing we need to check if uh, this LED here on the small board where the battery is connected to needs to light up when we power the motor because that's the charge LED so we're gonna place the I'm gonna keep it in position but I'm gonna place the motor on the tracks and as you can see the light goes on, so that is a good sign that, <laughs> that it might actually work. So I'm gonna pack the whole thing together and um, I'm gonna start the train. I'm gonna stop the train here. It has been running for four hours now. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's quite a lot. Um, voltmeter right now is at 2.8 so in reality it's about 3.3 um, yeah which becomes a bit on the critical level for uh, 
one LiPo cell, that means that, that it doesn't charge the battery. Maybe it prolongs the amount of time you can use the lighting, I don't know. That's the next thing we're gonna test. So I'm gonna charge the battery up to uh, three and a half uh, volts again, according to that voltmeter, of course. And then um, I'm just gonna enable the lighting without the train running. And then we're gonna see how uh, fast the uh, battery is drained. So we're gonna see how fast the battery drains without the power supply of the train. And um, then we can, can make a uh, adjustment if, uh, if this whole system with charging uh, the whole thing, yeah, is feasible or not. Let's put it like that. So that's what we're gonna do now. See you in a couple of hours. So after two hours, I went upstairs to the attic to have a look. And to my surprise, the level was already on 2.2. Uh, <laughs> a minute after that, the whole thing just went dark. So uh, probably when I just enable the uh, the charger or the, the voltage, the external voltage, the battery will be around 2.2. Here we go. There we are. So that means that without the charger, the battery can last for two hours, which is not much. Well, maybe the battery was a bit less charged than uh, before. So let's make it uh, two and a half hours compared to when I was using the, uh, the train as a charger. But with the train, it was four hours um, and it was still going. So that means that the system actually works. It doesn't work as well as I was hoping for, but um, it gives a bit more slack in uh, in the whole system. So the only thing I'm considering now is should I use a bigger battery? Oh, it now completely dies off while charging. That's new. Why is that happening? <laughs> Never seen that before. <sighs> All right. That should not have happened. I don't know why that is happening. Is the battery hot? No, the battery is not hot. Oh. Another problem has made itself visible. Um, I don't know right now. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know right now. Um, the only thing I can think of right now is if I disable this one here. There we go. Then the power is back again. Uh, but it's not on the lighting anymore. It's only going to the battery right now. So I think the uh, current on the train, well, that makes sense indeed. The current on the train was too much for the circuit or the battery to uh, provide current, which makes sense because when a train is riding, um, assuming that it's on nine volts now, so more power than this cannot enter the system. So when the train is riding, um, it did not charge the battery completely. It was draining a bit. So that means it's also when the train is riding. And in this case, uh, the lighting is using up the battery and it's not completely, uh, it's not charging enough to fill up the gap that the lighting is using. So that makes sense that uh, it just turned dark. Um, all right, now. <laughs> Uh, conclusion of this thing right now is that I can extend the time to four hours, which, yeah, which is a half a day. Uh, <laughs> when I shoot a layout in the living room, I uh, I tend to make days of like 12 hours. <laughs> so four hours is a bit uh, not so much, um, but with some extra batteries in spare that are charged, I can uh, I can survive a whole day. So I think um, I'm gonna look for a, a charger or need to build one of my own to charge these kind of batteries and uh, make the whole system work. Or use bigger batteries, like I said, but they don't fit inside the locomotive, then I should fit one inside here in the uh, passenger wagon, which I don't like very much. So. For now, I'm sticking with this principle here. Yeah, that's about it. So, um, conclusion is the charging system works. It does not work like I wanted it to work, but hey, 
at least we got some uh, we got some juice out of it. I just came up with an idea, <laughs> and I, I don't think it's practical, but it's it's something we uh, we can try, and uh, that's the following. I have a nine volt motor laying around without the motor inside because it was uh, damaged. It was uh, didn't work anymore, so um, I can use that motor or the body of the motor with the metal wheels to pick up the power from the tracks. So that's going to be an interesting case. So um, I need to fit it underneath the locomotive. So I need to, uh, yeah, remove this one for now. And if it's going to be permanent, I can remove it uh, or make it a bit uh, less wide. So what I'm basically thinking of right now, and uh, sorry for the, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a messy video because I think of this right now, so. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna put another motor underneath here. Uh, I'm gonna switch that motor, the working motor is gonna be underneath here. It's not uh, ideal for uh, the, the main load is over here, but that, that doesn't matter very much. And instead of, because of the wire length, I need to do that. And because of, um, and then underneath here, I'm gonna place the fake engine to pick up the power just for the um, for the lighting and that way we are gonna bypass the uh, normal motor I have a motor like that or a body of a motor like that because I used it yeah here it is I used it to power a 12 volt train on a 9 volt motor uh, train track so this is a motor that has been opened. The motor is is out. As you can see, the wheels are turning nicely, and I can use this one to pick up the power from the from the tracks. Now, like I said, I don't know if this is going to be a uh, sustainable solution because you need a uh, a few damaged motors if you want to do this. Well, I got a few damaged motors laying around, so I could do that, of course. Uh, but just for for sake of testing to see what happens. I'm gonna switch batteries. I'm gonna place a uh, 3.5 uh, volts battery inside, and then um, we're gonna do a uh, another lighting test. All right. Now testing this system with the dummy motor without the actual motor is pretty simple. I don't have to uh, run the train, make him uh, run some loops. Um, I can sit at idle on the track and test it for four hours like that. It's way more easier. The only thing I'm considering right now is that maybe the connection with the tracks is better because the train is now standing still and while it's moving it bounces a bit and the connection will be less stable. But I assume that would be, I don't know, 10%, 15% loss, something like that. Not more, I think. So we're gonna do this test and um, <laughs> yeah, I think I already know the answer because uh, I can charge it like this without a problem. So I'm enabling the system and then you probably see a orange charge. Yeah, there it is. There's the orange charge LED coming on and um, it should go off in, uh, in 30 seconds. Oh, it's off already. It will be on again in uh, 10 seconds, I believe. There we go. Um, all right, and <laughs> and now we wait. Uh, now I see. Also, yeah, I don't know if, if it's visible with the uh, shutter speed, but you can see that it's r more or less doing 750 milliamps, and it was more or less doing the same thing while running the motor. So that means that. There was just a very small part going not into the motor and into the charging system. Yeah, I think this could actually work. <laughs> so um, we'll just have a look. Um, I'll keep you updated. It has been five hours now and the voltage of the battery is at 3.0 right now. So um, according to this voltmeter. So. Um, that means that it has lost already half a volt in five hours. 
if I extrapolate that a bit, you can get to six, seven hours, something like that, before it's on 2.8. Uh, that's less than what uh, what I was expecting. I was expecting that it would remain a bit like 3.5, 3.4, something like that. But it turns out that 30 seconds of charging and 10 seconds of not charging is already enough to let the voltage of the uh, battery drop. I chose the uh, 30 seconds charging and 10 seconds not charging based on the uh, layout in the living room. That would be the case there i believe but if i use this train in the continuous loop then uh the battery would remain uh on the same level of course but what's the use of a battery when you're not stopping the train the whole idea is in the end to use a train that stops at the station automatically and after 10 seconds or so it rides off again it's cool you know <laughs> so um in in that case uh it prolongs the system, the dummy motor prolongs it, the time using the battery, but not, not sufficient. Well, sufficient is not a good word, but word, but um, I'm going to change the dollies underneath the uh, train just to have a look of how it looks like and, um, and see if I continue with this system or not. And this is how it looks with two motors underneath it. I only had these in white, which do not are very wrong in this case but i think dark bluish gray would be better so but it doesn't look that bad so um yeah i think i can continue with this uh, this idea to get an extra few hours of uh, juice in uh, inside the battery so let me know what you think i'm curious about your opinions um this is it thank you for watching i hope to see you next time subscribe if you haven't done so like this video, have a look at my main channel, and uh, see you next time. Bye!